Hi, I'm Ian Welch, Farlow's Group's Marketing Manager, and it's my pleasure to welcome you here to Sportfish. Now, many of you will have shopped online with us at sportfish.co.uk, but I suspect few of you will actually have visited one of our two sites. Our first site is in Winferton in Herefordshire, and that's our main warehousing and mail order centre. But today we are here at the Sportfish Game Fishing Centre, which is just off the M4 on the outskirts of Reading in Berkshire. And the story of the Game Fishing Centre is multifaceted really. There are a number of aspects to this wonderful site that I'm going to tell you about over the next few minutes. And I hope you will see why it's such a wonderful setting to work in and to come and visit if you're a game angler. The site itself is set in 45 acres of delightful Berkshire countryside. And the first thing you see as you pull into the car park is our wonderful retail warehouse, which features 1,500 square feet of all of the tackle and clothing from all of the leading manufacturers that you will ever need, whatever your interest in game fishing is. And it's not just the tackle and clothing, it's the team that makes the Game Fishing Centre stand out from any other retailer. They have an immense wealth of game fishing knowledge. They've fished all over the planet for every species you'll ever likely encounter. And whatever information you need, whatever technical advice, be it on tackle, clothing, or indeed fishing tackle or techniques, they're here to offer it and make sure that you get the very best gear at the very best price. But of course, it's not just about tackle. The delightful thing about this site is the fact that it's surrounded by three fabulous lakes. The one you can see here beside me is Haywood's Farm Lake. And it's 12 acres, crystal clear, and packed full of invertebrate life. And if you are coming down to buy a new rod, a new reel, try out some new line, it offers the perfect opportunity to try before you buy. Not only can you give that rod a cast, but hopefully you can attach yourself to a really fabulous hard fighting trout too. And speaking of the trout, it's regularly stocked with brown, rainbow and blue trout, well into double figures. Uh, there's the occasional golden trout as well, uh, a few tigers find their way in there. And not just any old trout, these are fin perfect, hard fighting fish that really do test your tackle to the utmost limits. It is a fabulous fishery and well supported by game anglers throughout the south of the country, indeed throughout the country. It's well worth a visit just for the fishing. I'm now standing alongside Kingfisher Pond, which is the latest addition to the Sportfish Game Fishing Centre. It's a, a small pond and was created as part of a project that we've been working on for a couple of years now with the Environment Agency, the local landowners, the Englefield Estate and local wildlife groups. The aim of it is A, to teach youngsters how to cast their first fly and to get them into game fishing, but the other thing, we have a great responsibility as a company to reduce our environmental footprint, to ensure that we act in a sustainable way and that we create an environment that works not just for now but for future generations. And this is part of that project. So it's really about encouraging the environmental awareness of youngsters, of the local community and of putting something back into that local community. The site isn't, yes it's all about fishing, but it's not just about fishing. It's about biodiversity and it's about the community and the environment as a whole. The next step on from game fishing really centres upon Haywards Farm Lake, um, the lake I mentioned earlier. And we have a number of courses we offer on site through our tuition team, headed by Chris Haywood. And after you've learned to cast that first fly, the next step is our one day still water trout fishing course, where we will take you onto the next rung of that ladder, teaching you a little bit more about still water trout fishing and how to advance along your game fishing journey. We have a superb team of expert instructors on site who will be delighted to instruct you in every aspect of game fishing casting and technique. Headed by Chris Haywood, and the team also includes Robin Elwes, 
who is one of the most famous casting instructors in the country. Uh, for example, he taught Ewan McGregor to cast uh, ahead of making the film Salmon Fishing in the Yemen. He also taught Eric Clapton to, uh, to cast a fly for the first time, Eric being a very keen fly angler. Uh, we also have JT, Jonathan Tomlinson, who works as part of the team, and JT is the current British casting champion. So however far you want to take your casting, one of the team will make sure you get the tuition you need for the type of fishing you want to undertake. The final lake on site is the Five Acre Hobby Lake. It's an absolutely delightful small lake with its own lodge, its own pontoon, its own boats. And unlike Haywards Farm Lake, which is for day ticket fishers, this one we hire out for private bookings. So you can enjoy the absolute joy of having your own lake if you've ever dreamed about having that exclusivity. So you can share it with a small group of friends, of family, of work colleagues. You can fish, you can socialize in the barbecue area, the picnic area, and just have a really chill day. And like Haywards Farm, Lake it has an exceptional stock of fish too. Browns, rainbows and blues well into double figures. There are some great tiger trout in there too. They've been caught to double figures. It really is a, a fantastic fishery if you just want to get away from it all, chill, enjoy a few beers and just have a great day out. Now Hobby Lake is right at the top of our land holding here and the very top of the biodiversity project and the environmental work that we've been conducting on site that I mentioned earlier. I'm now going to pass you over to my colleague Simon Bedwell who's working on that project and he will give you a little bit more detail about what we're doing on site to increase biodiversity and make sure that we leave a far better environmental footprint for those who come behind. So thanks for that Ian, my name's Simon Bedwell, uh, I work here part-time, uh, the team at Sportfish here everyone's got something to bring to the table. Uh, some of my skills revolve around project work and project management and so we've been able to sort of develop this site uh, not only in terms of bringing customers in and the fishing experience, but also uh, to move forward um, into other areas of allowing people access to fishing. So uh, here, um, a number of years ago, the uh, Network Rail did a lot of work on the main routes here to Reading to Bristol, uh, which meant that they had to drop some tree down. So they had a zero uh, biodiversity project running. Uh, we put a grant in and we were successful with that grant and you'll see some from the footage uh, that we're in the process of actually completely re restructuring the, uh, the layout of this place in terms of uh, biodiversity and in that I mean we are we've removed a lot of the foreign uh, species of trees and planting and we're putting all British in we concentrated on birds, bats and bees really and pulling them into our um, ecosystem here because um, we're right next to the motorway, we're right next to a little town but it's like a little haven here and so that's what we're doing. So you'll find uh, native planting all the way along, you'll find wildlife um, flowers, uh, wildflower planting all the way around the, uh, the site here and you'll also see an orchard all the way around the site but of course this will take time so we're working on a five year plan here to put all this in place and get it so that when people come in here in the future it's not just about coming here fishing it's about really sort of um, looking at the wildlife appreciating what we have and helping it along the way and that's what we're trying to do on that front Part of that was um, education and so with that biodiversity grant uh, we put in a section on educating young children. So we were successful in actually being able to build a small pond if you like for young children to start fishing uh, but also along that journey uh, of fishing and understanding about fishing is would be understanding ecology, the wildlife, planting, all the things that go with it when you turn up to do a spot of fishing but impact from a very early age. So of course you'll see here a pond that we built and it's a very successful thing in terms of uh, allowing kids that experience to uh, enjoy fishing and start it off and catch their first fish to managing what they're going to do with it. So it can be from catching to the dinner table and we'll take them along that route and help them with their parents along that route. Uh, and then going on from there really is our other part of the projects that we're doing here is that we really do have a, a sort of a, a ethic that we we really want to see everybody uh, have a chance of enjoying fishing 
uh, irrespective of any uh, any problems that they may have in terms of accessibility so less less able people for example people who suffer from stress or things like that can use this place without having to be helped along the way all the time so they can actually be independent come here do their fishing take advice when they need it but enjoy the fishing for what it is and for what for them so uh, in terms of that we are um, we've been successful working with the uh, environment agency uh, and also Englefield Estate which are here uh, in, in pushing all these projects together so whether it be the biodiversity uh, or fishing for all as I like to call it um, we're all involved in a partnership approach so you will see in the next few years you will see pontoons go up for example on the, around the lakes where people will have access to actually get onto a pontoon and fish from a pontoon instead of having to negotiate banks you will see uh, better access for less able people both in terms of their vehicles and also themselves uh, not having to be pushed around by other people uh, they can actually use their chairs and get around themselves and be completely independent which is where we want to get to so uh, it's very exciting there's a lot of work that gets done um, you know everyone comes to the table and helps uh, and certainly working in partnership with um, the environment agency in Anglefield is really sort of pushing this place forward so I'm hoping that in about five years time three to five years time you're going to see some real changes here for the better and uh, this will be more of a haven than it already is for everyone who wants to fish and it's as simple as that.